Okay, uh, hello, I know I've been advertising that I would do finish up the uh, drum mixing videos, so uh, here they are. They actually ended up being three more instead of just two, so uh, this should be good. Um, uh, just keep in mind, this is very much an overview. You would uh, probably do far more than this, but for those that are just getting started or kind of want to see the logic interface, um, this should be a good primer. Okay, enjoy. Okay, so here we are in the arrange window, um, and these are kind of the tracks that we're left with after that last tutorial. So we have that kick, um, snare, and then that snare sample that we made, an under snare. And then on my toms, this is where the toms really start to play in the song, so they're cut down, and also my overheads in my room. So if we are going to mix these, um, we can't do it from the arrange window. There are these little buttons down here, mixer. As you can see, this gives us a, a mixer. But the problem is that uh, we don't have a whole lot of screen real estate, and it looks kind of cluttered to me. Um, luckily, Logic gives us um, them in separate windows also. So you get to them by going to Window, and then there's all these windows. A lot of them parallel what's down here. Uh, but so if we go to Mixer, um, there's a quick key for it, and it's Command 2. So I And the arrange is Command 1, so you can just flip back and forth. It's quite easy. Um, so here we are, now we have our channel strips here, and they correspond to the tracks in the arrange window right here. Uh, you just don't have to look at the actual audio information. Um, and so let's look kind of an, add an overview here. Uh, per channel strip, this is our kick drum channel strip, and the setting allows you to like load in an entire uh, channel strip for this, and we'll use that in a second. Um, inserts, this is where your plugins go. Sends, this is, uh, we'll get into that in the next tutorial. Um, then input, this is if you were recording, um, this would be the input on your interface that you were going to use, and then output. And so what this output means is that this kick channel, uh, the output of this kick channel is going to go to out 1 and 2, which is hanging out right here. Uh, and it, effectively, this output 1 and 2 and the master are the same thing. This is just your, your interface output. Um, so each of these, all of these tracks right now are headed to out one and two. So before we even listen to these, uh, we want to kind of change that. Because uh, what I have is I have these three snare channels, and I want to affect them as if they were just one snare channel. Um, then I have these two tom channels the same way. I want to uh, affect them as if they're a stereo tom channel, just to make it easier to mix. And then same with my overheads in my room. I want it to just be a single stereo channel, one fader that I can grab to turn up my overheads in my room. Um, and then finally, after all of that, um, I want to just have a single fader to control the entire drum track. Um, so when I'm mixing in my guitars, my bass, my vocals, um, if I need to turn the drums up just a touch, I can just grab one fader rather than trying to keep the levels balanced as I'm adjusting them one by one. So the way we do this is this little plus button right here creates auxiliary channel strips. And auxiliary channel strips are just a way to send information from a track into another fader. And so you can send multiple tracks to one fader. Uh, so I'm going to make four just so I can make all those. And then this input here I want the input to these auxiliaries to start at bus 1, and then this ascending button means that um, the second one will go to bus 2, the third will to bus 3, and the fourth to bus 4, uh, etc. You can make like 50 of these, and they would just set up correctly. So here I am. These are auxiliaries. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send three snare drums to a single auxiliary track. So I need to name this guy, and double click, and I'll name it snare. And so you can lasso the, all the tracks you'd like to send to that auxiliary and the, set the output of them. Instead of to the in, straight to the interface output, I'm going to send them to bus 1 and it's uh, March Snare. So then I also have toms. I'm just going to name these toms, overheads, and then this is going to be my master drum fader. Okay, so for the toms, same thing, lasso send the output to bus 2 which says toms and then my overheads in room I'm going to send to output oops to bus 3 overheads and that leaves just my kick and since it's not going to be paired with anything I'm just going to send it straight to the drum bus bus drums 
Okay, so we still have a little bit of a problem because the snares, the toms, and the overheads are still going out to straight to the interface. They're, they're just bust to these single faders. Um, so, but you can treat them just like tracks and you can send the output of them to bus four drums. Okay, so sorry if that was confusing. Hopefully it starts to make sense as uh, we start to mix this. But uh, what I've done is instead of all these tracks individually going out to one and two, now they're grouped uh, under their type of track so I can control all the snares just with this fader. I don't have to touch these. Uh, same with the toms, same with the overheads. And then the kick drum is going to the drums. And then finally the snare, the toms, and the overheads are all going to this fader. So I can control all of my drum tracks with one fader. Uh, okay, so now let's get to the actual mixing, the beef. Um, there's a couple things that I want to do, uh, but let's give this a listen first. Uh, the things I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the overheads down because I don't want them to be as loud as the rest of these tracks. And I'm going to turn the toms down. Uh, we're actually not going to be really working with the toms. Uh, we'll work on them in the next tutorial. Uh, so, oh yeah, and then also my room mic, I want it to be pretty low. It's just to add a little bit of thickness to the sound. I don't want it to be a dominant sound. So now we're going to go back to our arrange, and we're at the beginning. So now we're going to press play and see what it sounds like. Okay, so with that sample that we put in in the last tutorial, they're already sounding kind of pretty tight. Uh, we could probably bring the overheads up a touch. Um, so now we're going to use plugins, and just keep in mind that this is the fast and dirty way to do this. Um, the next tutorial, so after this one, go ahead and watch the next one, and we'll go into how to actually build your own uh, channel strips rather than using presets. But for this one, we're going to use some presets. Um, because Logic has these pretty nicely defined presets already. Um, so for the kick drum track, you can go to drums and percussion, acoustic drums, um, acoustic kick, and we'll go isolated punchy kick. I've tried this one before, I know it kind of works for the song. Uh, so let's give it a listen. Okay, so it's a little bit clicky. Uh, we'll go over how to fix some of that stuff in the next tutorial. But for now, that works all right. So for the snares, I don't need to put individual plugins on all these tracks because I want them all to go to this fader, which they're already going to. Uh, but the problem is if I hit setting here, since this is an aux bus, um, we get all only time-based effects. Um, and that's not what we want because we don't want to just insert uh, reverbs over here. We want it to sound like a snare drum. Uh, so there's a workaround if you select the one of the snare tracks and choose the setting that you want. So we'll go to acoustic, or is it drums and percussion, acoustic drums, acoustic snare, and we'll just do, do acoustic snare 02. I'm not sure what this sounds like, but we'll give it a try. So now just this channel is going to have those settings, and I want it on here. So, but uh, Logic lets you copy and paste channel strips. So I'm going to copy this channel strip setting, and then I'm going to paste it into the snare channel. So then we'll just reset this one. And now all of these snare tracks are going to this fader that has all the effects on it. Um, so let's give it a try now. Okay, so as you can see, the overheads are kind of a little bit loud. So uh, that's not exactly how I would choose to mix it, but for something quick and dirty, like you need to give the the uh, band a copy of it really fast, or you just want to send your drummer home with his tracks, it's, it's good. Um, if you tune into the next tutorial, we'll go over how to actually build a mix uh, without using presets. Okay, uh, there we have it. Um, just continue on to the next video and that will be for uh, creating those kinds of uh, channel strips yourself without having to resort to presets. Um, so hopefully you can take what you just learned and start applying it. Alright, enjoy the next video.